Hello guys, welcome to my channel, Happy Style Youngs. My name is Naema and today we are going back to the basics of crocheting. Today we are going to be tackling the step-by-step -step guide on what you need to know before getting started with crocheting and before crocheting your first piece. So if you love crocheting and are passionate about the craft, you've definitely landed in the right place. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of our future crochet videos. So you've just come across the term crocheting and you've seen somebody working on a piece with a piece of thread and you've gained interest and you want to try out your hand in it. So what is it that you really need? The first thing you need to get is thread or yarn. So you need your pieces of yarn to make your first project. So how do you go about choosing the correct kind of yarn? There are different kinds of yarn and sizes in the market. You have, for example, acrylic yarn. Like for me, this is an acrylic yarn. It's applied because you see it's been twisted. So it's different strands and then it's been twisted together. This is a cotton blend yarn. So it is... 90% cotton and 10% acrylic and we have different kinds of yarn. We have pure cotton yarn which is a very strong yarn so for small kids because kids are sensitive to materials so if you're making a kid's sweater or a baby blanket or even if you yourself are sensitive to materials you want to stick to cotton threads and also the good thing about cotton threads is you can wash it very many times without it losing its shape that's with the cotton yarn you also have wool yarn or what you'll call a novelty yarn and with the novelty yarn it's very soft and mostly it's wool so we have different materials so you have pure acrylic you have 100 percent acrylic thread you have 100 percent cotton thread you have a blend of both like i have here you can have pure wool you can have the very expensive silk the only difference is acrylic is the cheapest among the range is a bit pricier than the acrylic but it's still very much affordable and a pure cotton one is pricier than a cotton blend and a novelty yarn or a woolen material that is soft it's a bit more pricey and a silk one can be very very expensive so if you're beginning your first piece you don't want to go for the wool or the silk so just get a cotton blend a cotton or an acrylic yarn to get you started with your first projects and once you're comfortable in making your first piece then you can move over to the more expensive yarns the other thing about yarns you want to consider is the size so you have the very thin ones like this one as you can see this size is quite thin this one is a bit thicker compared to this and then you have i have my blue thread this one is very thick so we also have colored yarns what is called a variegated yarn so it's a yarn with many threads on it many colors of thread on it the size of yarn is something you'll also want to consider because for a piece of clothing say you want to crochet a beach wear or a dress you'll want to use a slimmer yarn because the spacing will be a bit tight compared to when you're using a chunkier thread like this one and the spacing will be wide so for the chunky threads it's recommended for things like blankets for blankets for cardigans garment throwovers but again it's just a matter of how creative you want you're not limited to one thing or another just go with what you feel go with your heart's desire and how far your creativity can take you and now with with the sizes comes our item number two on the list which we will need to buy crochet hooks this is a collection of my hooks. Uh, some are missing because I can't trace them. Your size of crochet hook will be determined by the piece of thread you settle on. So you'll first buy the piece of thread and then on most labels they'll recommend the hook size that you'll require for that particular thread. For some, like for this one, it doesn't... It doesn't show the hook size. When you are at your local craft store or your yarn store, you can just ask the attendant to recommend the hook size for your ball of yarn. So the other way of settling on your the other way of settling on your hook size is I just like taking a loop of the thread and then 
just taking any hook and putting it across so I make sure that the thread fits comfortably inside the hook like that like for this is a size 5 millimeter hook and it comfortably fits inside so for this kind of thread you can use a size 5 millimeter hook and you can also use a size 6 millimeter hook but with this one you realize that the thread goes really inside meaning the tension will be loose so the most comfortable hook for this kind of thread will be your size 5 millimeter hook let's demonstrate that again you take your thread and then you pick a hook and you wrap the hook on the thread so you make sure that the thread fits comfortably inside the hook so for this one this is a size 3 millimeter hook and this thread fits comfortably so you can use this a size 3 or a size 3.5 hook also goes in pretty comfortably but a size 3.5 and a size 3 will give you different tensions we'll learn about tensions later on but that's how you check the hook size that you need for your projects so the largest hook size i've come across in the in our local craft shop is a size 20 which i've never used most of the hook size for my projects i use is this four so seven six five and three point five there should be a four there but i use mostly this for for most of my projects so for clothes swimwears bras shorts i use these ones and for bigger projects like blankets and rugs i use the six or the seven crochet hook size with chunky thread yarns the other hack that you can use is if for example you come across a very slim thread say this one this thread requires a size 3.5 hook but you don't want to use a size 3.5 hook for this project you want to use a bigger project the easier way of doing it is using is using it as a double thread so you'll take the you'll take your ball of yarn pull a thread from the inside and pull a thread from the outside so you have one tail end from the outside and one tail end from the inside you join it together like that and now you will not use a size 3.5 because the thread will be too big so with this now you'll upgrade to a larger hook size which is say a 4 4.5 or 5 and you can be able to see it fits comfortably inside that hook and you can use you can use a bigger hook for the same small thread but now you're using it as a double thread basically as a chunky thread so when you visit your local yarn shop they they'll have a variety of hook size metal ones plastic ones wooden ones bamboo ones and in different designs so just go in there and see what you like and pick it up but the hooks remain the same so after the hook the other thing that you require and is a must have on your list is a pair of scissors because while crocheting you'll be cutting thread a lot and you will definitely need a pair of scissors so you want to get a smaller one that is comfortable in your hands again it comes in very many different designs mine is very simple this is what i've been using over the years and the other thing that you will require is a dunning needle so a dunning needle is just a, a needle but it's blunt at the top and it has a very large eye hole over here and it comes also in different sizes so you'll want to get a variety for your chunky thread and your slimmer threads so it can go comfortably into the eyelet and this you will use mostly to tuck in the ends of threads after you've cut out your thread you will use this to tuck in those loose ends the other thing that i really don't have but for a beginner you will require is a stitch marker the main reason why i have not had one is i got a hack for it which is office clips when i started crocheting our local craft shop did not have a stitch marker so i came home and i had to improvise and i've never really bought one but this has worked over the years if i need to really mark my stitches i always go for this or just pieces of thread but if it's available in your craft store make sure you get 
a bunch of stitch markers, especially if you're a beginner, because you will need to mark your stitches a lot. Now, where do we get started from? That takes us to the next process, which is the crochet process. When you're starting off a crochet process, you'll start in two major ways. Either you'll start off with a chain, like I have here, or with a circle, and then work your way outside. The difference between the two is with this, with the chain, you'll be working on the chain and building your way against it like that. So if this is your length, you'll be working up on the width. But with a circle like this one, you'll start from the middle and work your way outwards, growing outwards. An example of this, so you start off in the middle and you grow outwards. But with a chain, case point of this pattern over here, where you start off on this edge, which is your chain over here, and you work upwards. The next step is how do we make this? And that gets us to the process of the crocheting process and the crocheting terms. So we want to make a chain like this one. The first thing you need to make is a slip knot. There are different ways of making a slip knot. The easiest way I find it is before we start making the crochet process, how do I hold my crochet hook? How I like to approach it is how would you pick up a spoon? So you just hold it the, in a way that feels comfortable to your hands. So you can hold it this way or you can hold it this way. Personally, I hold my hook the way I would hold a spoon, which is this way. So this is how I hold my hook. So just hold the hook and find a position that is comfortable for you. And you'll want to hold your hook with your dominant hand. Personally, I'm right-handed, so I'll automatically use my hook on my right hand and my left hand will be the supporting hand. So if you're left-handed, you'll definitely hold your hook with your left hand and your right hand will be your supporting hand. The first thing you'll make is a slip knot. How There are different ways of making a slip knot. How I find it easiest is I hold the tail end with my left hand. This is the longer side of the thread attached to the yarn ball. And then I will wrap it around my two fingers. I make sure it cross. And then I turn to the back side of my finger. I go below the first one and I pick on the second one. And I give it a pull through the first one. And I release my fingers and I'll have a little loop on my hook. And then I'll hold both threads with my left and give it a pull. And then I'll take the longer side of the thread that is attached to the yarn ball and give it a pull. And that is... A slip knot now from the slip knot you can now make a chain which is called also a foundation chain from the foundation chain now you'll build on your pattern but chains form the foundation chain so how you make the chain is you want to take the hook you wrap the hook around your thread and then you pull it through that loop like that you wrap the hook around your thread and you Pull it through that loop. You wrap the you wrap the hook around the thread, and then you pull it through the loop. And with that, you want to be counting the chains you make, because that will determine that will be determined by your pattern. So you'll work as many chains as your project requires. So you'll just be wrapping and pulling through the loop. You wrap and you pull through the loop and with that you are now conversant with making a slip knot and making a chain which will build your foundation chain for your pattern so with your foundation chain like this what you'll be working you'll be working in these spaces over here so these are the spaces where your pattern will go to so after you've worked your desired chains you want to be working in inside those spaces so how we work a single crochet is you just go directly 
into the space so you will wrap the hook on your thread and pull it through that space you'll be having two loops on your hook and then you'll be wrap the hook on your thread and pull through those two loops you go to the next space wrap your hook around your thread and pull it through the space now you'll have two loops on your hook wrap hook around your thread pull it through those two loops that's working a single crochet so you can have a pattern that requires you to just work purely single crochets and that's how you'll be working your single crochets you go into a space wrap the hook around your thread and pull it through the space then wrap your hook again around the thread and pull it through both loops and that is what is called a single crochet next we'll be tackling double crochet before we tackle a double crochet is in any pattern especially if you are working with a chain you will work what is called a turning chain and a turning chain basically is working a chain before you begin your pattern so in this case when you have a loop on your hook you wrap and work the same way you hold a chain so it's just a chain but it's basically it can be depending on what your pattern dictates it can be two or three or four or even five so after you've worked on your chains then you can begin your pattern so for me i've worked two chains then we will turn and then we'll begin what's called a double crochet so after you've worked on your chains your foundation chain you'll want to the last two or the last three depending on what your pattern dictates will always act as your turning chains so you'll count one two three and always work on the fourth or you'll count two and work on the third again that is dependent on the pattern that you're working on so to demonstrate how a double crochet is worked first you want to to wrap your hook around your thread and then you'll skip three which will act as your turning chain and will work on your fourth space so after wrapping the hook on your yarn you'll move to your fourth space go into that loop wrap the hook again over your thread loop the thread through the space and you will have three loops on your hook you will wrap your hook again over your thread and pull through two loops then you will wrap your hook again over the thread and pull through two loops again you will wrap your hook over your thread move to the next space go inside the space wrap the hook around your thread pull it through the space you will have three loops on your hook the difference between a double crochet and a single crochet is a single crochet you'll have a single crochet you'll have two loops but in a double crochet you'll have three loops so with the three loops you will wrap your hook over the thread and pull the thread over two loops then you'll remain with two loops you'll wrap your hook again over the thread pulling a yarn and pulling it through those two loops and that's how you work your double crochet so remember to wrap the hook around the thread go into the space wrap the hook again over the thread and pull the thread through the space making sure you have three hook three loops on your hook wrap hook over the thread pull through two loops wrap hook over thread again and pull through two loops and that is a double crochet so after you've made your row of double crochet what you want to make is your turning chain so what you like to do is wrap hook around thread and 
pull it through the loop wrap hook around the thread and pull it through the loop making two chains and then you'll turn your work and then start working at the top space right in these spaces at the top either you can choose to work at the top or inside between the double crochets so depends on how you want your outcome to be either or none is correct none is wrong it's totally dependent on you so you will work your first your turning chain before you start your second row of double crochet and after that i want to introduce you to another crochet term treble triple crochet or treble crochet so you'll hear different variations of it so it's triple or treble so the difference between that and the double crochet is you will wrap your hook around your thread twice before going to the next space and wrapping the hook again on your thread and pulling it through and having four loops on your hook instead of three when it comes to the double crochet and then with the four loops on your hook you want to wrap your hook around the thread and pull it through two wrap the hook around your thread and pull through two loops wrap the thread around wrap the hook around your thread and pull through two so you'll be pulling through thrice instead of twice that's how you work your triple crochet or treble crochet we'll repeat that again you will wrap your hook around your thread twice making sure you have three loops on your hook go into the space wrap the hook again on the thread pull up that thread through the loop and you'll have four loops on your hook wrap hook or what over the thread and pull it through two loops wrap hook over thread again and pull it through two loops wrap the thread the hook wrap hook around thread and pull through two loops so it will be a bit longer compared to a double crochet we'll do that one final time wrap hook around your thread twice three loops on your hook go into the space and then wrap the thread wrap the hook around the thread and pull the thread through the space making sure you have four loops on your hook wrap hook around thread and pull it through two wrap hook around the thread and pull it through two wrap hook around thread and pull through two and you have your treble or triple crochet coming back to our circle how do we make this one now to make this one you'll start off by making a ring there are two variations of making the ring number one is working what's called a magic ring and how you work your magic ring you want to hold your tail end of the thread with your less dominant hand for me it would be my left hand wrap the thread around your two fingers making sure it crosses turn to the back go below the first loop and pick up the second with your hook pull it through below the first one and make sure you give it a little twist and then remove your fingers and you have it like that you have that little circle and with your hook twisted you want to wrap the hook around your thread and pull through that loop to make a chain then you will wrap the hook again over the thread and pull through that loop and then you'll have created a circle and a beginner chain or a turning chain to start with and then inside this circle now is where you will work your pattern you wrap your hook once go inside the hook wrap the hook around go inside the circle wrap the hook over the thread and pull it through the circle making sure you have three loops on your hook 
wrap the hook around your thread and pull through two wrap the hook around the thread and pull through two we will work another double crochet wrap the hook around the thread go inside the circle wrap hook around the thread and pull the loop through the circle three loops on your hook wrap hook over the thread pull pull it through two loops wrap hook over thread and pull it through two loops and then you want to continue make making the double crochets according to the pattern so and you'll continue making the double crochets according to the number that your pattern dictates so this is your magic ring so after you've made enough say double crochets inside your magic ring and it can be double crochets or it can be single crochets or it can be treble crochets depending on what your pattern dictates we made double crochets in ours as a sample piece and now i'll introduce you now i'll introduce you to our next term which is a slip stitch after you've finished making your double crochets you'll have this tail end hanging the beauty about this is when you pull on the tail end you close up on the circle making it really nice and tight you'll pull up on that so that your two patterns can come together to close off and then we'll work a slip stitch how you work a slip stitch is you go into the next space so for this one i'll go at the top of our first double crochet so you'll count three from the bottom one two three on this third space you'll go inside that space with your hook and then you will wrap your hook around the thread and pull it through that space and then you'll the same same hook you'll pull it through that space again so such that you're left with only one loop on your hook and the slip stitch what it does it closes off patterns especially if you're working on a granny square or on a circle like this one so that's how you work a slip stitch and after the slip stitch again since you've closed off your pattern what you will work is again a, a turning chain so with one hook one loop on your hook you will wrap hook around your thread and pull it through the loop wrap hook around the thread and pull the thread over that loop now with this you can begin the next row of your pattern the other way of starting off a ring is by starting off as as a foundation chain how you do that again you'll start off by making a slip knot holding the tail end of your thread with your left hand wrap the thread around your two fingers making sure it crosses turn it to the back go below the first loop up on the second pull it pull it through and remove your fingers and hold holding both pieces of thread you want to pull them such that you're left with a loop on your hook and give the working thread a pull to tighten the loop and then you'll work your chain in this case you'll work three or four again this will be dependent on what your pattern dictates so in this case we will make four so I will wrap my hook over my thread and pull it through the loop, wrap hook over my thread, pull it through the loop, wrap hook over my thread, pull it through the loop, wrap hook over my thread and pull it through the loop. Now I have now I have four chains. Then what I'll do is I'll come in the first chain over here. I'll go inside that space then i'll work a slip stitch so i will wrap hook over my thread pulling the thread over that space and over the loop creating a slip stitch and then what you'll have when you give a project a pull is a little circle in the middle and we'll be working your pattern inside that space so after you've made your slip stitch you'll be left with one loop on your hook you'll work your 
what you call your turning chain. So you'll wrap hook over thread and pull it through the loop. Wrap your hook over the thread and pull through that loop. And then with that, now you can start, say, working a double crochet inside that space. So you will wrap your hook over the thread, go inside that space, wrap thread and pull through the pull the yarn through that circle, yarn over, pull through two, wrap hook over thread and pull through two. So you'll have that circle where you'll be working your pattern again you'll be working what your pattern dictates either single crochet or double crochet so you'll continue working your double crochet inside that space to finish off the two you'll come at the top of your first double crochet counting from the bottom one two three and on this third space you'll go in with your loop You'll go in with your hook, wrap the hook over the thread and pull that thread through that space and through the loop on your hook to create a slip stitch to close off your pattern. And after that, now you can wrap hook over thread, pull it through the loop, wrap hook over thread, pull through the loop to create your starting chain and with that we'll have covered the major terms used in crocheting and with that we'll go through making a small piece of kitchen cloth as a sample for you to start with as a sample for you to start with so we start off with a slip knot wrap thread tail end of the thread on your left wrap thread over your two fingers Making sure it crosses, turn to the back, go below the first, pick up on the second, remove your fingers and pull through those two loops. Then the longer part, which is your working thread, you want to give it a pull to tighten the loop on your hook. Then we will work 10 chains. So After your 10 chains, what you want to do is on the third, on the third chain, one, two, three, you want to go into the third space, third chain, so, and work a double crochet, so you wrap the hook over your thread, go into the space, pull that, wrap the hook again over the thread and pull it through the space, three loops on your hook, pull through two, pull through two to work a double crochet and work double crochet in each space across. After your last double crochet, you'll work your turning chain. So you will chain two, turn your work, and on the this chain two will not count as a stitch. So you'll start your counting your stitches in this first space so you'll work double crochets across so wrap the thread wrap your hook around your thread go into the space pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two to create your first double crochets and work double crochets in each space across that row and at the end of the row the pattern repeats itself so once you've worked your last double crochet in that final space, you want to make two chains, which will be a turning chain. So you'll make two chains, then turn your work and begin another row of double crochets. And it will be a repeat of the same. So once you've achieved your desired number of, your desired size of kitchen cloth, for me I'll stop over here. 
what you will do is make one chain so you'll wrap hook over thread and pull it through that loop and it is here that you will put your scissors to use so you'll cut your thread and pull that loop over and give it a little tight so that way you'll have closed that space and your pattern will not come apart and it is at this point that you will see the need of a darning the need of a darning needle so this the purpose of this is to tuck in these tail ends you just take your darning needle and go through the pattern so i like either hiding it on this hide it in this first row so i'll just go and loop around the pattern so going over the pattern so making sure that that tail will be looping and it will not come apart just like that so inside the pattern so making sure it will be hidden inside that row so just going over going through the, those loops inside the pattern and once you feel like you've gone through enough length to hide the thread you now thread the tail end on your eyelet like that and then give the darning needle a pull from the front and the tail end will be hidden inside that pattern so let's hide that again so for this other tail end we'll just we'll wrap it around down here so i'll just go through the first one and wrap it just like that so it will be hidden inside that loop so with that and then i'll take the tail end and insert it through the eyelet of the needle and then give the needle a pull from the front and the tail end will be hidden inside there and then give it a little pull so it you will hardly see the tail end hanging loose now since you've made a sample kitchen cloth what you can do is go and make a bigger kitchen cloth and once you're confident in doing that you can use a different pattern say a single crochet to make something like a scarf and after that now you can start now researching on the different kind of crochet patterns out there there's a lot of patterns i don't think you can exhaust on all of them so and that's how you'll start building up your crew and that's how you'll start building up your crocheting skills so remember to do a lot of research and practice 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 with the different designs and with that you'll discover you'll discover new patterns and new ways of crocheting and tricks as you go along so the the trick is to just research and the more you crochet the better you get and the more you learn across the journey and a disclaimer is crocheting can be really addictive so you'll be saying let me finish this pattern and before you know it the sun is out and you haven't slept because of the excitement of crocheting so crocheting can be a good addiction the thing also is your local yarn shop will be your newfound heaven so you'll be visiting it a lot and in that you'll also discover new tools that you can use in your crocheting journey and with that i really hope you found this video informative if you did please leave us a comment in the comment section below and i hope this pumps you up to begin your crocheting journey so if you found that video informative and you liked the content we put up please give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment in the comment section below also follow us on instagram for daily updates and remember to Remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified anytime we put a new crochet video up. So till next time, bye.